And I want to introduce one right now. We have Mark Henri Jean Baptiste. He is a local charcuterie chef, and he is uh, based out of Hillsburg. And I wanted to um, let uh, introduce him right now and say welcome to the show, Mark. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me. Really glad you're here, man. So we got to taste some of your uh, amazing wizardry this morning. Tell us a little bit about how you got, how you focused on charcuterie as a, as a specialization. Actually, uh, thank you again for having me. But uh, charcuterie for me, it's uh, really something unique and special. Um, you know, working in high end kitchens throughout my career, uh, we were basically in a brigade. So you had one person doing fish station, one person doing meat and salads. And uh, when I met uh actually michael sullivan i worked with him in blackberry farms he made me kind of realize that you know charcuterie is a little bit all-encompassing you have to be able to really understand butchery uh seasonings and uh cooking temperatures and how that works so my Mm -hmm. experience in paris opened me up to a whole new dimension about you know what charcuterie is you don't necessarily have to be in meat or pork products. You can go into vegetables, uh, fish, terrines. Well, for those that don't know, I mean, to be honest with you, a lot of us think, well, let's have some cheese and salami and, you know, some crackers. And in, in, in a way, that's part of what charcuterie is. Why don't you give us a little bit of background on, say, that? Because, I mean, somebody that went and studied in Paris and worked there, clearly that's sort of the epicenter, I think, of where that sort of art form kind of came from. Tell us a little bit about the background of charcuterie. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, charcuterie is even further back. It goes back to the Roman area. Um, typically, what uh, the American consumer thinks about charcuterie is kind of Italian influence, your dried salumi, your copa, and so on. Right. But French is more uh, cooked, ready to eat. So we're talking about pâtés. Uh, we're talking about hams, cured hams, riette, which is a slow-cooked pork uh, in its own fat. And so these are products that are regional-based because, um, obviously, the temperature conditions uh, permitted people to keep their products uh, longer at a certain kind of time uh, refrigerated because it was cooler back then. Uh, and so these products are a little bit more elaborate, of course, because, you know, it's French. French. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Say no more. <laughs> so exactly. So Do you have more butter. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I mean, these are really we're talking about technique um, that's been developed through the ages and really trying to refine. And, you know, it's not just throwing a pate on a plate. We're actually making, you know respecting the products that we're using and adding value to them. And you know. right, Well, thank you so much yeah. for that because, I mean, honestly, this is what I love doing about the show. I know what I know, but I kind of don't know what all the stuff that mm-hmm. I don't know. And you just really brought out a real clarity for me. So the French style is more cooking and preparation and then um, sort of combinations of things of, as you say, salts and spices and whatnot. Exactly. Like, and, and, and today you, you paired three different uh, individual things, and I'd like you to speak to that a little bit, with three very unique rosé wines. So the first rosé wine we had was from Jeff Runquist, which was a rosé Sangiovese. The second was from Rick Motion, which was the uh, rosé Pinot Noir. And then the third was from... Um, was it Rick? Yeah. And uh, at, at Calstar, sure, yeah. and he did a, a, a Pinot Meunier rosé. Mm-hmm. Each has their own sort of acidity and sort of balance throughout, and their fruit fruitiness, and especially the acidity part. You obviously tried these wines before you came up with your ideas. What's that journey like for you as a chef to sort of be creative and say, you know, I want to bring out the best of the wine, but I also want to bring out the best of this food. And then where do you go with that? How do you do that? uh, That's a great question. Your red wine with red meat, I'd say that'd be a complimentary uh, pairing because you have, you know, the heavy and the heavy. But contrasting, I think, is even more interesting and adds another dimension where you're using acidity and salt uh, in order to bring it back out aromatics mm. in your food and your between your food and your wine pairings right so with the pairing that I decided to do I had some really rich fatty foods against a light kind of crisp you know really great rosés 
So I figured, well, why don't I add a little bit of ingredients here and there that's going to add this kind of acidity or that saltiness in order to contrast with the wine. So, for example, for the first wine, I had the uh, chicken uh, liver pate. I added a green peppercorn to give you that nice green uh, kind of acidic crunch to it. I also, for the second one, I had, I had the riette, which is a slow-cooked pork in its own fat. And I added a little uh, espelette, which is a kind of Spanish-style pepper. I found one locally made uh, out here in Boonville, which is really great. Um, and so that gave you a little bite as well uh, to your you know, rich, fatty uh, pork product. And then finally, I made a slow-cooked ham. Uh, and I added a cornichon, which is kind of that French, that small French pickle. Uh, yeah. And that gave it a nice little bite to that, you know, silky kind right. of creaminess to the, to the ham. Yeah. And the salt, what was the center one, the one with the pork? That was the riette, yeah. The riette. And that had a little encrusted sort of a, it was almost like a little mini tart. What yeah. was that crust made out of? Uh, that was just a simple flour, oh, uh, water okay. tart. With shell. butter. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, that was, that was actually really good. And I noticed, I mean, it was visibly noticeable, the, the coarse ground salt on top of that. And so, for those that are wondering about acidity and, and balance and things like that, chemically, and I don't want to go too deep on this, but there's something that happens with your mouth and your taste buds when salt meets acidity and stuff. Is that why you're sort of playing with those to find a way to sort of balance that out? Exactly, yeah, because, I mean, when you're tasting, especially the richness, uh, we talk about how the fat coats the palate, so that coats your tongue. So you, when you're eating something really fatty, you have a tendency to dilute the aromatics or right. the, the products. Uh, right with salt or acidity, that actually literally cuts through uh, those tastes and allows you to have those kind of sensations of aromatics in your wines or different kinds of food. Especially in high end cuisine, uh, typically you'd finish your sauces with a little vinegar, either sherry or balsamic, so that way you would cut the richness. Especially French being butter or olive oil, and so that way our guests could enjoy their wines uh, if they're especially ordering Grand Cru wines. Right. It'd be a shame that all the uh, aromatics of the wine are kind of overwhelmed. Muted almost, yeah. right? Yeah. And so there, with the acidity or the saltiness, it's going to cut through that nice. and really open up your palate to taste. There's so it. much to learn about all this stuff, and it's fun. This is what the journey to me is all about, really, because. Um, you know, sharing this kind of information with people because I'm learning so much just from speaking with you today. Um, uh, uh, and I love the idea of contrast. I mean, um, sort of, well, you just gave some great examples of it, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, just really, just super good examples. Now, where are you here? Are you in the region where somebody can come and uh, check you out? Do you have, like, an online store? Do you have a restaurant here? How's that work? Uh, so I'm just kind of starting up, actually, Mike. Uh, so my company, Maison Porcella, we do kind of catering and pop-up events throughout uh, Sonoma County. Okay. Uh, you can come. Uh, every, last Friday of every month, I do a pop-up at a tasting room in Idlewild in Healdsburg. Huh. Uh, Where so, Tom's at. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's a great addition. Yeah. Uh, and so we, you know, kind of work with them to do kind of pairings and uh, do little salads or sides that you typically find, you know, in French cuisines uh, that you'd eat those pâtés with. Right. Or uh, I do pop-up events uh, throughout Sonoma County, and I do catered events, private dinners Perfect. throughout. So you can well, check out my website. Well, yeah, we'll put that all up on the blog, and we'll put some links to how to get a hold of him. One of the things, too, that is really on people's minds these days, it's sort of right... It's really important. It's almost like knowing if something is uh, done in a sustainable way. Um, and, we, you know, that used to sort of be a buzzword, marketing buzzword, but now it's just reality. I mean, I think people are really aware. Yeah. And once they're aware, then it's like, okay, we need to know where all this stuff came from. And one of the things you said to me was really important this morning. You are big on sourcing everything locally and organic and as fresh as possible. So how do you find, as an, I would call you an artist, I mean, you're a chef, obviously, but um, your palate is pretty big here in Sonoma oh, region, isn't course. it? Of course, yeah. I specifically, I mean, came here, I'm originally from New York, I mean, New York don't get me wrong, has great 
products, but here in California, it's just this, especially in the North Bay, right. it's a microclimate where you've got everything, and especially in Sonoma County, I mean, you've got great pork producers, great uh, vegetable producers. I source out of uh, Stone Valley Farms. I have a butcher down in Santa Rosa, you know, 20 minutes away that butchers the, the pig, which is only 30 minutes away. So right. it's, it's really a just all-encompassing kind of uh, collaboration between the farmers, uh, the butchers, and me kind of adding that value added to the yeah. product. And what's cool, too, is that you guys aren't shy about bringing – you know, us consumers into the whole sort of process because the more that we know, the more we can appreciate what it is you're doing. I mean, Absolutely. somebody can go down to Safeway and buy a, you know, some Farmer John's liver pate or whatever, but it's not even near yeah. what you guys are doing. Yeah, this is a, a luxury product. That's what I'm trying to sell here is that, you know, we're trying to really respect, you know, the pork uh, or any kind of meat or any ingredient that I'm using of course. and value it. And the only way to do that is to use the best technique in the best way. Of course. Way well, Mark, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. If you guys are interested in going from farm to fork to Mark Henri, I want you to give him a uh, checkout online, and we're going to put his uh, – information up on the blog post but mark how can people reach you right now are you on instagram or yeah. any of those kind of things Maison Porcella, it's m-a-i-s-o-n-p-o-r-c-e-l-l-a all right check it out. and i'd like to buy a vowel anyway <laughs> we will definitely have his link on there don't miss it if you guys come to this area and he's going to be at a lot of different events that are going on as well and we had tom on earlier and they do something once a month with their italian uh, wine tasting sort of seminars that they do. So you'll have an opportunity to check it out. Mark, I want to thank you so much for joining us thank today, man. So I really appreciate that. It was Cheers. Great to be here. All right, everybody. Well, listen, stick around. We got a lot more of the good life yet to come. We are just kind of getting warmed up. We got hour number one out of the way. We're going to jump into hour number two coming right up. So I'm Mike Rayford. You're listening to In Search of the Good Life show. Stick around. We'll be right back. Cheers. <laughs> 